welcome to the Literaries Podcast. I'm Erin McPhail. And I'm Morgan Manich. And today is a very special episode for many reasons. Many reasons. <laughs> it's, a good, it's a good one. <laughs> so wow. first reason is, is our friend anniversary celebratory <laughs> episode. Three years of three, you're stuck with me for three whole years. It's I can't believe three, you made it this long. Three years that we've been we've been <laughs> here, not on the podcast here, but like friends here. Mm-hmm. Three yeah, years. It does yeah. not feel like it does three not. Years. It feels like both eternity and like a month at the same time. It does. Yeah. No, it does. Because we met. It was yeah. It was 2020, which is yeah. wild to wild. think of like what has transpired since then. Yeah. Literally Three everything years. under the sun. <laughs> so many things that so much trauma that we've been like. <laughs> listen to what, listen to <laughs> We're trauma bonded. Like we can't leave each other. <laughs> yeah, that's just crazy. It do, like you said, it feels like both an eternity, but then like no time at all. Yeah, it like I still can't believe it. It's it's wild. Three years. I think COVID time makes things go by faster. So like yeah. <laughs> the fact that we met like during the pandemic is like a whole thing. But yeah. Yeah. And honestly, just the fact that we like met how we did. Yeah. Through the hashtag that we did and that we like struck up the conversations that yeah. we had. It was so weird. Like so against the odds. It that really we was. Even, like stuck to talking to each other. Cause like I've met a lot of like acquaintances online yeah, with that, writing. Like, you are and friendly it's like with. kind of petered out. And like, yeah. you know, I'm still friends with them and I would still consider them friends. But like, I've uh, we we've struck up like a a friendship that's like never going to die because we've like been trauma bonded by we've been trauma bonded so many, so many things exactly and like we found like clones of each other like we have like yes. almost the exact same taste we and, do like I would say like ninety percent of things we have say, the same taste yeah I would say most things for sure yeah sometimes you say something that's like what you're like what no, the heck <laughs> absolutely not <laughs> but yeah the things but, we differ on is like obviously plotting and pantsing. Mm-hmm. We differ on how we execute, like, our Disney trips. You're, you're insane. You're I'm insane. apparently insane. Um, Some, someone likes character dinners and someone doesn't. <laughs> someone likes shows and meet and greets and someone doesn't. And you will never catch me watching a castle show unless I'm enjoying a funnel cake that's in the where, vicinity. That's, like, that 10%. That's that 10% <laughs> where we differ. It's like, And it's, like, that 10% is so vehement where it's, like, yeah. how did yeah. we get this <laughs> diametrically opposed to each other? It's literally, like, very much agreeing on, like, everything or, like, we yeah, like, like completely, completely in sync or, like, completely, completely opposite different. and, like, fight to the death yes. sort of thing. I love but that. Also, this episode is very special and it has to do with this theme someone's getting married and it's not me (laughs) so at the time this episode comes out it's coming out the tuesday before my wedding which is wild so when you listen to this i will be getting married this upcoming saturday i will which just saying that was like towards your wedding you'll be en route toward north carolina wow just saying that was kind of weird like yeah this saturday like yeah we're recording in advance but i'm like saying at the time you'll listen to this my wedding will be this Saturday. You'll what? I must be a married woman. That's weird. And we'll I, get I, to see each other. We okay. We've I'll never get to seen... make sure you're not a catfish. <laughs> I'm not a catfish. We have never met like physically in person. Yeah, this is all be a clip been... on our Instagram of us. Of we us will get. A we will have mean green. pictures. Yeah, we'll have our like real life. Mean oh, green. I'm gonna bring like outfit changes so it looks like it's a different <laughs> day. <laughs> so we have so many pictures. Together. I love that so much. We're like using my wedding as well, so the. So no, this is a literary podcast this photo shoot. This is a literary <laughs> podcast marketing set. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's wild. Yeah, like we'll be meeting each other like in person mm-hmm. for the first time. Imagine you're like a sixty year old man in a white van with free candy <laughs> on the side, and I've been bamboozled this whole You've time. You've been hosting a podcast with. <laughs> <laughs> no, I can assure you, like everybody's real. Um, they said that very suspiciously. There's some strange. But I mean that I'm like, there's some strange characters in my life, but yeah. they're real. <laughs> yeah. I'm going like, to have fun. It's like, yeah. I spy, but with the You'll be able things to, you like, told me about. You'll be able to put two and two together yeah. um, with people that I'm just excited to meet your mom. Meet. I love your mom. Um, yeah. My mom's a good one. Your mom's iconic. She's iconic. She She's creative. She's been great. She and I have been like <laughs> she and you planned your wedding in a month. We've planned. We I got engaged in July of 2022 
And I'm not kidding you. And you were done planning in July of 2022. (laughs) We were done planning literally like, I think by mid end of August, we had everything lined up. And I think it's because my mom and I are one, we're both creative. Two, we're both super organized. (laughs) Three, we're pretty decisive people. Mm -hmm. So like we had it. Literally, I was like, that was your Kris Jenner moment where like we had that locked down everything in like less than a month. You were like sending me pictures of like all the stuff. And you're like, this is done. This is like every day I would get something new of like, here's the floor arrangements. This. They're yeah. finalized. <laughs> here's this. They're finalized. And it's weird because that feels like I will say like this engagement period has gone by more quickly than I almost feel like any it other time in my like, life. It feels like you told me you were engaged like yesterday. And Hugo feels like that too. Like it has flown. Because I was thinking yeah. like when we got engaged, okay, if we're getting married the next October, that's like. 15 months of it wait, was like full 15 months and it, it feels does like not two feel months. like that it feels like it's been no time at all and like, i feel like you texted me yesterday that yeah. you were getting engaged and now like next month it's crazy when we're recording this it's you're, like never you're... i don't think it's like hit like that it's been well probably because you planned long. the first month so you haven't been doing wedding things for <laughs> yeah it's kind of like we we did it all and then now it's just like trickle in trickle in yeah of like the little things to pick up and like the details but i did have morgan read my vows which i I did which i did outline because you did not she's crazy she she's fully crazy i did outline them she -hmm. made me cry on a on a fine evening night she's who would have thought that like a page and a half in a google doc would (laughs) No, send you. like I was full. I was like, why? Why did you make me do this? Like, I did. I, I but you know that's the thing is like when I sat down to actually write them, I had been thinking about mm-hmm. what I wanted to say for so long mm-hmm. that, and I had notes in my phone where I kind of kept said outline mm-hmm. that it just kind of was like okay, like I'm prepared to bring tissues now at least. Oh, I, I know do. that I'm going to be crying at your wedding. So. I will have I have a handkerchief that's like my something old and my mm-hmm. something borrowed that's been passed down in my family. Um and my dress has pockets. So I I'm putting your dress has pockets. Yes. You don't know but I'm putting the I'm putting the handkerchief in my pocket so that I have it. Yeah. And it's prepared. lightweight enough. Yeah, so I'll be prepared and I'm just really excited to to hear Hugo's vows because Addison has read his vows. She oh, knows really? what he oh, said. Oh, really? Oh, that's so yeah, sweet. Yeah, she read his just so like I could have an idea of like where we were like on length so that yeah. we weren't like too, you know, too off. Yeah. So my sister has read his vows and told me like that she started tearing up at the end. So I'm like, I'm really curious to, <laughs> I'm to gonna know cry what, at your wedding. To I know just what know it. He's gonna, I'm gonna look over at you at one point and just be like. And I'm really excited to see what he. You're just will gonna hear say. quiet sobbing, and you're gonna be like, "Oh, there goes Morgan." There's Morgan. We know who it is. <laughs> so yeah, it's just wild that it's like come up this fast, and we'll try to. I don't know we'll have a we'll have some pictures, you and yeah. I, and we'll some official marketing materials, some <laughs> official materials, and maybe we'll do if we're feeling a little rambunctious, we'll do a special. Shout out clip a live to, shout to the out fans. To the fans. <laughs> for, live from my wedding reception. <laughs> We're here for it. You know what? We're going to play the theme song at the reception. <laughs> Honestly, that would be iconic. Tell the DJ, we need you to play the literary 30 podcast second clip of the literary song. podcast. <laughs> We're going to debut this episode at the wedding. I would be simply done. No, I would leave the building. <laughs> <laughs> but that brings us to today's topic. We're talking about weddings in fiction. To Yay. be very my, my favorite. We I we're always gonna talk about a wedding. I don't yeah. care if we've been like both been married decades. I am we'll gonna be a spinster a and I will ta- be talking about weddings. We'll talk about probably. a wedding. That's what the the joke has been now that you're gonna get married. You have to Kate Middleton me into into a man. Yes. No, I will Carol Middleton you. Oh, okay. oh yeah, yeah. Yes. See, you, you I will. Oh, Chris Jenner, you. I will. Carol yeah, Middleton, do, you. You're doing amazing, sweetie. Me you're doing it. amazing, sweetie. You <laughs> trying, me trying to set you up with a noble man and yeah, England. wealthy, wealthy, hot man. That's all I ask. That's all you ask. I'm but fine well, with an arranged marriage. You have seat so me at your wedding with all the hot ones, please. <laughs> there all is the someone. Bachelors. There is a particular bachelor. Mm-hmm. I've he been was told a friend about. of ours from college who 
um dear god i hope he's not listening to i hope this. he's not listening i'm not even going to say his name because no don't don't a, please. a friend don't of leak ours that yet. from from college who i have mentioned to morgan is is british cut to my cut to my wedding episode and this clip <laughs> is being played <laughs> Wouldn't that be iconic? Okay, but now now Addison has got her eyes on him. Oh my gosh. Me and Addison. You and Addison. Me and Addison can, are gonna fight for the bouquet. Can, That's what's gonna you happen. You can battle it out. Um I told I told Hugo this and he was like, You do know that this this friend is ten years older than Addison, who's seventeen. We love an age cap romance. Well, I'm like Morgan at least Morgan's legal. Addison's not. <laughs> <laughs> that's yeah 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 but well, weddings, weddings weddings i get genuinely sad when there's not a wedding at the end of a book i do love a wedding and as much as i love a bittersweet ending like if you're gonna end hap like a happy ending you be you have you a, wedding, a wedding or they're happily married and yeah. end the epilogue i don't care like it has to be or like a short story something like a wedding has to be pictured for the characters at some point in time or they're i will just, get like actually sad i mean this might sound redundant but like they're timeless and i know like mm-hmm. we all think that but there's a reason that weddings like we keep coming back yeah t- to them in so many forms of entertainment like i don't know if yeah. people think it's a rite of passage which it shouldn't be because like if you don't want to yeah. get married then don't get married then that's not gonna be for everyone yeah and it shouldn't be an expectation but i think yeah. it's just like uh something like we're very familiar with is like it's a milestone species like we yeah it's just been a centuries home thing yeah. and that's the thing it's so old and it's so steeped in tradition that there's very few rituals we have left that are that yeah. you know yeah. ancient in that sense so it's i like think that's it's... part of like why with my own wedding like there are so many traditional elements because i yeah. feel like a lot of them we're having we've a kind royal of wedding like you like all of your well, everything. Morgan will report back after this episode and see if it actually like lived up to royal wedding energy. Imagine if I was like it was horrible. <laughs> the food is awful. I um everyone mm, sucked. Marin no. was awful and I hated her and no! we're ending the podcast. What the <laughs> Imagine. Oh, imagine. <laughs> the literary's never come the... back after this episode. <laughs> I hope it's the opposite. I hope yeah. that You hope it's gonna be the opposite. If it's you not walk we're gonna away have a problem. being like, wow, beautiful. Time. Well, I know what I know how all of the things so i'm like already Morgan knows like all board. the details yeah yeah she yeah. knows like i'm i won't spoil things to her family so i'm like the only other person that she's told like about decor mm-hmm. stuff yeah yeah i've kept that my mouth true. shut you've kept your mouth shut and you'll get to see it all for the first time i'll go I've down my mouth shut <laughs> <laughs> for one time you've kept your mouth shut yeah but i feel like in movies like i don't know i just I, I will never not cry at a wedding scene or like, even reading it. I'm going to cry. Yeah. It just makes me unexplainably happy. Yeah. Because it's, it's like so romantic. Help. Nothing is nothing is as like sweet and fluffy and it's lovely like its own little wedding. dream dream world. Like yes. a little it's moment. like celebrating the romance of two characters. And it's like, <laughs> yeah, it's just it's yeah. just the perfect place to put all the sweetest, best moments. So have you ever written a wedding we have differing opinions about this we do because, have like, differing opinions i'm of the opinion that like you can put a, a wedding in a book and it can be as fluffy as you want it to be and that's the one chapter you're allowed to be completely top fluff completely be romantic fluffy. in every way and nothing has to serve the plot it can just be great and fun yeah. and romantic and you are of the opinion that it has to actually do something so yes i <laughs> so i like would i wrote several wedding scenes like middle school mm-hmm. high school even it's the um, girl experience you the revolutionary to. war book that i wrote the one that i queried there was a wedding in that that was solely fluff it didn't do jack oh, squat otherwise i um, know when you rewrite that you're gonna change it so you have to give oh, me the original wedding scene <laughs> i'll give you the original wedding scene but it didn't do anything for the plot who cares it, it's well, there to be good that's the thing is like you don't want to overstay the welcome and as much as i love a wedding overstay the welcome to have it has to have a narrative purpose. It has to do something. It has to function. And no, that's doesn't. my hot take to no. you at least because you want the fluff. I love like weddings and babies are like my two book things where I'm like. That's where we yes. do agree, which we'll get into is the pregnancy trope. We're here for it. We're here for it. We're having a full episode on that. 
stay look tuned to that in the future in the future because we have hot takes on that but we do those two things where it's like i don't care if it adds to the plot i don't care anything of the mm-hmm. sort it just needs to be sweet <laughs> and yeah. nice to read yeah and i will put a gratuitous wedding in my books any day <laughs> i feel like what you said weddings are a good i feel like they work better in film than they do in books because you can really play up the visuals yeah. of of a wedding in a movie but yeah i i think they work well as like bonus scenes mm-hmm. and like bonus content as like oh like you read the book you know the characters end up well here's like a look at subscribe their wedding. to my newsletter and here's a wedding scene sort so of thing exactly like it's just fun and it yeah. just is like a little a little dessert to the book you read yeah. It depends on how far you go into it, but I feel like weddings are a good breathe like point for books mm-hmm. where it's like if there's a lot of chaos, if there's a lot of, you know, everything else, it's nice to just take some breathing room to have, have like a, have happy, a wedding. A happy yeah. time. Yeah. Yeah. But I also we love a wedding that's like very dramatic. Dramatic and is literally like a post- historical device. weddings are better. Let's just they're put better. that right out there. They're but better. it's in historical weddings, I feel like you can shove a lot of context into them of like mm-hmm. traditions because like every era yes. had like completely different different traditions. traditions so you can like shove <laughs> shove every like historical context and like that can be like your big you know shebang of yeah. all of all your details and your research but I mean it's just giving speak now taylor swift taylor's version of like what what can you do to start drama at a wedding like someone <laughs> someone standing up and when the minister says, speak now or forever, hold your peace. Oh, shit. Is that what Someone speak now is about? Up. Yeah, that song. The song on the album, Speak Now, is kind of like a narrative song where she is in oh, Interrupts is the per- a wedding? She's the persona of someone that interrupts a wedding and runs I off I did not know. I'm not a Swifty, so I did not know that was what that song no, was. It's a, it's a the only song. thing I've heard is like the Instagram audio of like all the album titles where she like sings all the album titles. Well, she's like, she's speak, like speak now. That's yeah, that's this song, and it's basically her like showing up to a wedding uninvited and like running off with the groom. And I'm like, that's the wedding. I love that. That's what we need. But see, that's what uh, conversely, like in books, like you can have like a really fluffy wedding, or like weddings are the drama time. Yeah. You can stir the pot at a wedding more than any other event in life. Yeah. That's like, I love when a wedding can work off of like romantic tension especially in like mm-hmm. an arranged marriage are they actually yeah here for it fond of each are other are they into or... each other are they fond will they of each grow other? to be fond of each other do they have other people they love who are having to watch this marriage go down? of convenience may have yep. i love marriage of convenience let mm-hmm. me tell you mm-hmm. i love arranged marriage and i love marriage of convenience tropes absolutely like 100 percent here for that yeah that's a good one. And I always will like – I love an arranged marriage in general. Period. Or an yeah. arranged engagement. I would myself have an arranged marriage. I I love that and I also question it. <laughs> That's our friendship in, in, in oh a nutshell. I think my – I think – and I don't – maybe this is true for you too. I think my love for like arranged engagement, arranged mm-hmm. marriage – Honestly, I swear it stems from Barbie, Princess, Princess, Princess and the Popper. Also, <gasps> we, oh, we Princess went to Diaries, different. too. Yeah. But, we but I to... think about Annalise is going to have to marry King Dominic, and then Eric mm. is keeping up the ruse. But then, like, it kind of, like, is a little weird because Priminger, <laughs> Priminger the villain. I'd marry point... Priminger. Hold up. Hold up. All right. I'm pausing what I was going to say. <laughs> that, was, that was a joke. That was a joke. Wait. Carry on. Okay. I was like, would... But, like... There's I been so of, many Preminger memes on my timeline recently. I and kind I'm of feel like it. you're like, it's a joke, but also I could see you being yeah, like, yeah. you could probably... I could probably do it. We're both dramatic. We'd either kill each other or just be, like, a power couple. And then, like, the poodle dog would just be, like, oh, your... Yes toady you're badass my 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 you know it's in like in white chicks where he's like oh my poodle it's like that yeah yeah it's oh, when man. i fight people and, and do things that can be my little sidekick i can be your sidekick but what i was gonna say is like priminger really at one point was like yeah i'm gonna marry annalise and like we were like six years old watching we like, this okay scene. with that <laughs> yeah. this old man creepy asshole be like i'm gonna marry barbie and i remember like thinking <laughs> like like, who does he think he is? 
I didn't think that, and I think that's why I love age gap like, romances I think I, now that I'm oh, older. Yeah, yeah. I, well, like, if Preminger was decent and, like, normal, yeah. then, yeah, like, I'm here for that. Let me tell you, I do not bat an eye at, like, 30-year age gap romances. I no, will tell you that no, right now. No, that's another thing that we're here for. I, I do like an age gap. Hot take, I love a mature man. I yep. think we do love a mature men man. my age suck. And I would yeah. for sure marry an older man. And that's my hot take. If anyone wants to do an arranged marriage, please. Oh, no. This web- like, er, this episode is going to end up on like a old men looking for a companion. I know. Oh, site. gosh. So you've Sugar opened, you've seeking opened that. Seeking <laughs> No, but it's like the book I'm reading right now. It's like she was like, oh, he must be like 30 years older than me. Yeah. And I was like, yeah. hot. Cool. He's still cool. cool. I love no, him. No, I do like an older guy. Like an age gap romance. Mm-hmm. I'm here for it. Which brings me to one of the weddings that destroyed me is Edith's wedding in Downton Abbey. Oh. To Anthony. Spoiler alert. He's He leaves her at the altar. I'm going to cry. And they had they had a bit so of an better. they had a bit of an age gap, and that was just horrible. Yeah. I can't can't imagine. No, I, if someone left me at the altar, I would go scorched earth. <laughs> like I would be, uh, which the also worst person one of the ever. worst leaving at the altar. Sex in the City movie. <gasps> oh my Awful. god, that's my, one of my favorite scenes of all time because it's like, so it's so, so much. dramatic. But the heartache of that, I my can't favorite, imagine. It. One of my favorite moments in film history. Is when like Carrie like falls into Charlotte's arms and like she's like, Give me tries out to go up to her and and Charlotte oh goes, yeah no and she no, like, and screams she walks, and like death points at him and, and it's like the best thing heels. I've ever seen yeah she like stomps away heartbreaking mo- like heartbreaking. truly one of the most heartbreaking moments is wasted when she, one of the most beautiful dresses of all time she has the phone and she's like he's not coming and Samantha's like what do you mean he's not coming she drops the phone oh my god. I literally can't. I can't. It's a sad. It's It's such a sad scene. It's so sad. And it continues being sad for like the whole movie. The whole movie. Oh, (laughs) I just can't even imagine. And it just hits different now. Like, no, I can't imagine. I don't think I'd ever recover. No, I don't. I would be horrible to everyone for the rest of my life. I would would, physically. I would deserve to be. (laughs) It would physically and mentally destroy me. No, I would not be able to handle it. No. No, I would have you. to be carried and it's like out. you. I spent time and money planning this whole thing. That's <laughs> yeah. what, I, what I would be sad about. Like, if you're gonna leave me, like you suck anyway. Like, I invited all my friends and my family and spent to this, yeah, all this time on this beautiful affair, and you like Here leave you me are. at the altar. You couldn't have wow. left me before. <laughs> like, uh, at least that, you get cake. <laughs> at least you get cake. That's why it works in fiction. Though, is like. Wedding like, it's like territory. it's like you think like what's the worst thing that could happen what a wedding i think aside from someone like dropping dead that's the worst thing that could happen yeah or maybe you Getting know left at the, someone your, standing up and your mother-in-law object. wearing white to your wedding I don't oh know. i if anyone wears white at your wedding i will still wine <laughs> i'm not i'm not legal to drink I but i just, will just carry just wine out. at the bar and say hey i'm i'm going to destroy this woman's dress just, just so you know, out. I have your back in that regard. Like, nice. if anyone dares, if I anyone will be the person up, to spill wine. You're going to be like Dwight Schrute on The Office trying to catch the wedding crashers and be like, come yeah. on, let's go. I'm leading you out of here. <laughs> I give you permission to, to do so. Um, I will be the bodyguard. I will case the whole place and make sure there's yeah. no crashers or I think it's just like people. weddings. At, like, they're the pinnacle of emotion. All yes. emotion. It's like the, the culmination of everything. Of everything. Like it's... growing up and like you've got the bittersweet, but you have the romance and you might have like family drama. You might have anger. You might, like there's so many avenues mm-hmm. if you, you know, are writing a scene and you're thinking of like what, who are my key players and like what yeah. are they feeling about, about this? Yeah. It's just, it brings out every possible emotion you could mm-hmm. have. And it brings out the worst in people as well as the best. So it's like it's just a melting pot of the worst and best emotions you could possibly feel. And mm-hmm. it's the perfect breeding ground for drama. <laughs> and I, I, yeah. I love it. Yeah. Yeah. That's why I also like Jamie and Claire's wedding in Outlander because once again, yeah, like drama, they're being forced together and like. They both have so many, you know, different opinions on, like, what's going to go down. She's also married as well. She's also she's, married she's as well. Wow. Polygamy. But her wedding dress. Oh, my God. I oh, my that. gosh. Love it. Like, love it. Love it. I 
I adore that. A dress. very well designed costume. Yeah, it's beautiful. Like it's beautiful. If I could steal that, I would. No, I know. Like okay, I love there's... my wedding dress, but that's also beautiful. There's so many beautiful historical wedding dress costumes and i feel mm-hmm. like it's because the costume designers can kind of go crazy <laughs> yeah it's and true be completely opulent in every way yeah. i recently my aunt when we were talking about the marie antoinette thing in one of our episodes she's mm-hmm. like i have a marie antoinette story for you i was in her wedding i was like three years old like mm-hmm. it was a while ago like i do not remember but her entrance into her reception was the same song that uh marie antoinette and louis walked down the stairs too i love that so much and she was like i was on the dj like you have to open the door at exactly this time and like that is like hysterical. I, do they have video of it i they might i have to ask her if she has I bet it that in like her iconic. archive somewhere yeah but i bet that's amazing iconic. i love that i was like three and like probably playing with toys or something and not when you told me that. that i'm like i'm rethinking that like i i love that <laughs> idea i'm not gonna steal it from her but that's amazing yeah, you'd steal it. I dare you. Do it. It's, it's yours too late. Now. I've already like it's been years. That. Like you've got to have yeah. it. <laughs> That's amazing. Yeah. Well, do you want to go into some of our favorite weddings? Yes. So one of my favorite book weddings. Mm-hmm. If you Morgan and I talk about this series a lot. I don't know if we've mentioned it on the podcast before, but if we haven't. Go pick the series up. It's the Lux series. <laughs> I'm, by, I'm by Anna Godberson. Morgan's in the middle of the it. Book. Yeah. There's four books. They came out. I started reading them in like eighth grade. I want to mm-hmm. say they came out. The first one came out in like, you know what? Let's look it up. Let's fact check. Yeah, let's live Google. I started the series like a while ago. Like when you first mentioned it to me, I started it. And like I uh-huh. haven't had the time or the, the motivation to get through the whole thing but like i think about it really often well that's for good. like for like not having finished it like i think about the luck a lot it. so the first for, like, one it came yeah. out in 2007 oh wow yeah i, I didn't start reading it till like 2011 mm-hmm. um there's four books in the series and it basically follows a bunch of different young girls in the gilded age late 1800s period. morgan's one of her favorite time periods and kind of like summer high society, summer not, mm-hmm. and like the drama and the romance and old you money, get new money, old money, new money. You get a glimpse into their different romances. Some of the mm-hmm. girls are chasing the same very wealthy bachelor, and iconic series. And I'm not mm-hmm. going to spoil it for you. And don't spoil it. I won't I, spoil. It I kind of listeners. want to be spoiled because she won't tell me anything about the series. I'm not and telling I you. Know all the drama, but I will tell you. You can. Everyone there's listening a, can go pick is it up. Is there a high society wedding? There is a wedding in the last book. Mm-hmm. And some drama goes down. And <gasps> if you read this, you will see why it's... I, I, I feel like I can't talk about it without giving away spoilers, but... <laughs> Is it, really, is it a high I society really, wedding? I just need to yes. know if there, it's like a Gilded yeah. Age wedding. Okay, yeah. then I'm excited. But I'm also not excited because I ship two particular characters that I'm very scared about. And I don't... Yeah, I hope it's them, but I also don't hope it's them because you just said there's drama, and I don't. So, well, there is a wedding before this wedding. Yeah, that is good, but this one and this last is book the really, drama. um, this character I really grew to to feel for Penelope. So, I'm not saying who. So having this wedding, I love Penelope. She's having this wedding, Penelope's kind of like the bad bitch of the book. She's she's kind a of girl a boss. I adore her. She's not a villain. She is she's completely a, justified in everything she does. I mean, she's... they all they all are kind of antagonists to each other, but she's like the main. That's why I love mean it because girl. Like, I feel like so many books default to like one person has to be the bad guy, uh-huh. and it's like this book. They're just all, they all are. They all are, have their moments know, doing things to each other, and mm-hmm. like they're they're all each other's villains, and like it's just fabulous. Yeah. I'm going to go finish the second book immediately after we're done with this because I want to know all the tea. Yeah, but go like pick this series up. It was, I think, pretty popular when it came out. Like, it was on I did not hear, like, a word lists, about it. But so it's, it's, you're the first I've heard about it. It's, like, gone. I think it was a little before your time, but it's a fabulous yeah. series. I honestly think... It's very think, well written. I think if it had to be done over again, it would have worked beautifully as an adult series because I think mm-hmm. that's really... I was yeah, a, a weird. Of... I was a weird teen that was into that, but a lot of people I yeah. don't get mesh. They didn't. Like I had friends in middle school reader who did not um, vibe with 
the historical aspect, but I was yeah. gobbling it up. Obviously. Yeah, obviously. <laughs> a, lo- a lot of like the situations they're in are very adult and like could they are. If they went like no holds barred adult, it, it would have been really cool. And you'll see as you read through the series, with each book, I do feel like they kind of grow up a the little. The problems bit more. are a little more adult. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. For sure. Yeah. And there's more like adult characters that are that they're interacting with who are well into their 20s 30s so i think if, if it was redone in this day and age it would t- i would definitely shelve an adult yeah no i i agree that like and just the gilded age like that's like a big like it's got big problems in that yes time period it's mm-hmm. not like, it's like new york city gilded new york age. society is not Woo! for for the faint of heart faint of heart it's no. it's a lot but i love penelope so much she can do no wrong in my eyes. I if Henry and Diana don't add up together, I think I will scream. I I'm not saying I will. anything. I know. I like. I know, but you're not saying anything. <laughs> They're probably not going to add up together, and it makes me so sad. I wouldn't I'm so say scared. anything either way because I wouldn't want you to know like an ending, and like either way, like you need to feel the ending of how like, it happens. This is how I know it's such a good book because, like, I'm like, I have like, like heart palpitations right now, like, thinking being about scared it. about like where they're gonna end up. Like, where they're gonna end up. It's no, it's a very good series. Like, even though I haven't finished it, like, I know it's just, it's just well written. It's, it's probably gonna be intensely dramatic, which I'm 100% here for. Like, and I was like, the first book is completely drama so like what's gonna it's gonna have to ramp up to get to four so it like what is gonna go lot. on i'm so scared Again, it like just go go and Plus, just go read the it. original co- the new covers are just like text but the original covers had the most beautiful dresses with oh yeah with the dresses mm-hmm. they were totally not gilded age but they were not gilded age but they were not they were just like so they were um, lord and taylor modern palm dress, they palm dresses. they lured me in yeah there it is very pretty I own the hardcover of the first one, I think. And yeah. it's like this beautiful, this beautiful like, pink, pink dress. Tiered dress. And it's like, oh, it's beautiful. I always loved the, the dress in the last book. It's this like lavender. Again, it's definitely like a, a kind of I a like prom. envy with like the red slash yes. in the middle of like this white dress. Yes. That's a good one. I love the Splendor one. It's like lavender. And it's yeah. very silky. I feel like, yeah, no, I'm... I have to go. I'm gonna. Can we stop this so I can go read? Because <laughs> I want to. I want to finish it. But the rest of your no. day is gonna be spent doing that, and I'm forcing yeah. you to. And you're gonna be like Morgan. You're rooting for the wrong characters. Like she... Elizabeth Holland is one of the main characters. Like mm-hmm. I could kind of care less about her compared to the other ones. <laughs> like that... she's like on like the bottom of my totem pole compared to, to compared to the drama. Of... That will change. Will it? Yeah. What is she gonna get up to? Because she was like and really willing to to be dramatic. She like I won't spoil that thing of the first book, but man, she really Ooh. she really went for it. <laughs> you you will. There's more. There's more. I I'm expecting my opinions to vastly differ mm-hmm. depending on the situation. I think these, they will. These teenagers are crazy, man. They're batshit crazy. Yeah. yeah, they are. They're getting up to some tea. Also. Anna Godberson has a series set in the 1920s. I did. I have this bright on young list. things. Mm-hmm. I think you would, yeah, specifically I would vibe with that. Your vibes for the 1920s is a trilogy. You would love that. Yeah, I yeah. Need, I need to just go on a binge. And again, it kind of follows three different girls from from different eras. Well, not different eras. Blah. It follows three different girls from different levels of society Mm -hmm. one wants to be kind of a broadway starlet one is like an heiress one finds out she has a dad who's like a gangster so oh i like that they all intertwine and like have their fancy like houses and yes it's a lot that yeah speaking of different classes is the maid's name lena Mm -hmm. i haven't gotten to her chapter yet in the second one yeah despise Mm -hmm despise i will never like her i don't care what she does i will never like her she's i think awful. that's gonna change too okay she's awful and i do not like her would you like to mention this is one of your comfort rereads but they have a pretty yeah. interesting wedding setup a very interesting 
because there's two. Um, the Royal We. We've talked about this before. It is sort of a Kate and William fictionalization. <laughs> the of... William and Kate fanfic. Yeah, it literally is. And they mm-hmm. kind of predicted Meghan Markle, which is a whole other thing. Oh, did they really? Yeah, they I wrote have an not American read... marrying into British royalty like years oh, before oh, Meghan Oh, I thought you meant that they had um, the character that's like Harry that they had had him end up no. with. I no. have not read the There's second book. There's drama with him, too. Oh, <laughs> you I'm gotta sure. Read the second. the, the first book it. is normal. The second book is like off the rails. Wow. Like not normal. Like you need to read the second book. It's like just so the off pure... the rails that like it's not believable it's a li- or it's good a little suspension of disbelief okay but like kind of not like you 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 kind of have to judge for yourself i thought it was like a lot just because of the first book but no i liked i liked them both and i liked this the second book is both realistic and not realistic like the plot's crazy but like what the characters are going through is very like realistic and heartfelt mm-hmm. and, and i think very important so you would you yeah. would definitely like the second one well, the but the first wedding. one the wedding um as mentioned, it's about an American sort of marrying into the the British royal family, this AU version of the royal family. Yep. Um, I, I didn't they go with like the Bose Lion name? Like they like just stole that. <laughs> that's the that's the family name for the royal family in this universe. I don't remember, but yes, I think there is a lion in there us. somewhere. Yeah, but yeah, yeah, they, you know, get married in this very interesting way which very interesting way which is not what you think of royal wedding Mm -hmm. but it's very sweet it's you know as a couple hounded by paparazzi intensely down to what yeah do you think while we're talking about royal because we will forever Mm -hmm. talk about a royal wedding just as much as we'll talk about a wedding yeah do you think it's (laughs) true that prince harry and Meghan markle said that they had a private ceremony with the archbishop of canterbury before the wedding itself do you think that's real or do you think that's like some people have said that they think that's just a plot to like look more relatable i could believe either way to be honest yeah yeah i'm not the biggest megan harry fan i think they're you know very desperate for attention Mm -hmm. and you know you're allowed to leave the royal family but like don't write a book about it and monetize it sort of thing yeah um but (laughs) we're royal watchers so like we might differ from a lot of people's opinions i think like either they are are so like like that that they would have a private ceremony before Mm -hmm. the royal wedding Mm -hmm. and or they're also like wanting a pr stunt to say like oh we we got married private we were were humble yeah yeah i would believe either to be i I can honestly with harry and megan i can believe it i can believe both yeah, both takes of that, that story, they're yeah. desperate for attention but then i can also you know as we know what went down with diana yeah. and just just the the, the pressure circus. of being in that family anyway yeah and how they operate with the press i can also see yeah i, I can see it both ways i yeah, actually sure. this is one thing where like i don't have an opinion yeah. I, <laughs> I can literally see it both ways and i think i think time will tell who knows yeah. maybe it won't but yeah there's so I many rumors both. around a royal family that it's like so you'll never know many. the truth until like they die and many years later their diaries are discovered sort of thing of like yeah. you'll never know sort of what really went yeah. down but. i'll be curious to see what goes down but i'm already like when's the next royal wedding like, i know i i was thinking the other get, day um, like, was it eugenie that was got married Be- beatrice. beatrice she got One married during, got married. during COVID. beautiful dress beautiful tiara everything i wish we could have seen her wedding because that would have been room. fabulous yeah but yeah pandemic We'll have to wait for Prince George and Princess Charlotte yeah. and Prince Louis to. Yeah, we're gonna be all the work. You want to fly to London with me when Prince George? Oh, gets we married? definitely will. I will for yeah. any of them. Yeah, we're gonna be, be camping that. out. It's like it's just wild. Like, like you know, there are kids like in England right now whose parents are probably like vying for their little like ten year old. I'm like, vying for it. Be in the right. <laughs> I'll marry the royal family. Good luck. I hope. I I think that would go differently than, yeah, you expect. Yeah. Just the drama there's, there's surrounding a royal ones. wedding, like that's like, just like definition of pomp and circumstance. Oh, for sure. Which we love. like. I I love some pomp and circumstance. We let me tell we you. love. Like I, if there's anything like I can ask Kate Middleton, I want to know mm. like what she was thinking, riding from her hotel to Westminster Abbey. 
yeah. when she got out of that car. Like, what goes through your mind in a moment mm-hmm. like that? And, like, when I'm writing, yeah. like, royal things, I want to know, like, what do you think? Like, is she mm-hmm. thinking just like any other bride just, like, about to walk down the aisle? Or is she thinking about how you many people be. are watching her? I know. I'm like, there's... You're in a gilded carriage in an Alexander McQueen construction dress. dress people are and filming a tiara. You, people filming you from all angles. Yeah, and you've sort of been groomed for that for however long, princess yeah. training camp sort of thing. <laughs> yeah, like, I just wonder what she thought. Like, I wonder if she okay. thought, wow, this is all for me. We were robbed in the Princess Diaries that we didn't get to see me and Nicholas's wedding. I and the know. coronation was beautiful. I just rewatched it like a couple of days ago, and the coronation. The coronation beautiful, is a great moment, but, but I like, want I that we, wedding. I I wanted to see like me as the actual wedding dress and not her Andrew wedding dress. How do you think it would actually go down in real life if what happened in Princess Diaries two happened now? Oh, like, would we like insane? <laughs> like, like I think genuinely, would we t- like would people take that seriously from from a future monarch? Like, would it be as cute and like, oh, she wants to no. own her own? I think it would people be crazy. Would be appalled, like, I think people would I, be appalled. Like they framed a lot of like the scenes with like Elsie Kentworthy eggs with Elsie. <laughs> like she Those was talk going shows, through. Yeah, yeah, she was going through. Like she's going down the aisle. She's cantering down the aisle. She's not getting married. Like, it was, like, the talk show perspective of, like, what is going on? What's going on? I just think about, like, if we were to watch Real Wednesday and that happened. It would be great. (laughs) We would be live texting each other, like, turn on the Genovian wedding right now. Truly, like, the... The drama. PR drama. Think about, like, when the queen died. Like, the the crazy, Crazy. you know, Twitter storm that happened. Like... A royal wedding failing like that, that yeah. and then the queen gets married <laughs> instead of and then the queen like, and then the queen marries her, her bodyguard. <laughs> yeah, her head of security. Insane, insane. Like imagine if that happened in real life. Yeah, it's and like, then and then afterward, the princess married the so, person that was trying to, trying coup to take the throne. <laughs> done, like, absolutely like, done. Wonderful. There's been rumors the about thing. Princess Diaries three for so long. We need it. We need we, it. This, the world. But here's needs it. here's the plot hole for me mm-hmm. about Princess Diaries two. If Nicholas and Mia were in love and he mm-hmm. wanted to be king, more or less, why not just like they could have been together from the beginning and he could have they could have been together and he also would have had what he wanted. Yes, he'd be like Prince Consort, but like technically he's they king in all but name. His uncle was like, no, you have to be king because like Mia would still. Would still supersede would him. Would still have yeah. the yeah. It's a like Queen Victoria situation where like yeah. she's the monarch sort of thing. Yeah. So so yeah, because he does say I, I wanted you to be king, not not to marry a queen. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Ex- exactly. Yeah. yeah. Ex- that's the line. Yeah. Icon. I love his uncle. His his uncle is an icon. I love the him best so much. moment. My God, is, Mary is I would marry him. <laughs> when, okay, I'm simply done. She would marry Viscount Mabry. Mm-hmm. That's his name, right? Yes. I believe so. Pronou- yeah. I want to make sure I'm yeah. pronouncing it right. And Preminger. <laughs> so this is where you are today. <laughs> no, I, Viscount Avery goes over Preminger. Okay, okay. But I have a lot of respect for the actor. The actor is very, like, he's good. academic yeah. and well-spoken, and yes. I love him very much. So, like, that probably goes into that. But The, the most iconic moment, honestly, you and I or Gretchen, the housekeeper for him, that when she's watching stuffing all of the, popcorn yes, into the seat. She's watching the wedding go down and she's stuffing popcorn in the seat. She's just cackling. She's the living Princess for Diaries it. Princess Diaries 2 is hilarious. I was like laughing. Like, I've seen it so many times. I didn't get like all the jokes when I was a kid. Like it's hilarious. Oh no, some of the jokes you don't like, get. Like when when her. when you know the prime minister's wife stands up after she says I'm not getting married and he's like sit down there might be a dinner. I was like dying laughing. No, I, I was also like that's me. Love when the maids are like pestering people and mm-hmm. Lily is like Rosencrantz and Guildenstern come with me and that made no sense to me as a when child. When I was a kid, yeah. But now I'm like, yes, that does make sense. <laughs> like, yeah, a lot of a lot of right there. Viscount Mabry's vines lines are just hilarious. Now that I look back, like he's he was an icon. Like, an he icon. Hilarious. He's like her tiara falls off. He's like, someone might try to take that away from you. Someone, someone like, like me. me. <laughs> <laughs> I no, he was iconic. He's no, like I, the power hungry. Dude. When when he's getting out of the car and he's like, "It's a very simple concept. You have to open the door before the, the, the person dies, and dies of old age." <laughs> yeah. That it's hilarious. We need for and he's like, Please. he's like, I will wave the national flag when a true born Genovian once again <laughs> sits on the throne, King, King Nicholas. Nicholas. <laughs> and then when she's like, "Oh, she stopped the parade." And he's like, cavorting with orphans. Horrible. 
Oh my god, he has this no heart. This has been heart. the Princess Diaries, the Princess Diaries venting section where we honestly, just if go over if any love, podcast episode Diaries. has to be the week of my wedding, it's talking about the yeah. Princess Diaries. We need to start Shut Up and Listen, a companion literary podcast just about the Princess Diaries. <laughs> Shut up and listen. Eggs, eggs with Elsie. And now we're back to Eggs with Elsie. I'm Elsie. Keep your eggs sunny side up. <laughs> I'd like to tell her what she can do with her. Eggs. <laughs> Oh man! Okay, we need help. That's probably a good place to wrap Just this up wrap before it up. Morgan and I simply go off the rails and recite the whole movie. Go off you. the rails or continue off the rails. Continue off the rails and recite the whole movie for you. Well, I want everyone to wish Marin a very happy wedding. Oh, yay! We are we are pre recording all these so she can enjoy her honeymoon as well and have some some time afterwards without having to imagine recording the imagine like the you know and I wedding. get to our honeymoon and I like whip out the microphone and I'm like this is happening on our honeymoon you're in Magic Kingdom <laughs> they're coming to you live from Magic Kingdom <laughs> like set up in like Casey's corner or something and quick quick note before we formally end the podcast it should be noted mm-hmm. that Morgan the day after my wedding is flying to Disney World mm-hmm. and then a week later Hugo and I are going to be going there for our honeymoon so really like we're uh-huh. we're She's kind of, you're kind of like on the honeymoon in spirit. You're like scouting it out. Yeah. 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 I will tell you what rides are closed. You're warming it up for us. I'll try the snacks for you. Yeah. You can like let us know what's good and what the vibe is. So (laughs) I love that. You're going literally like mere days before. (laughs) Iconic. 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 We're we're Disney people at first. We're We're Disney Disney adults. adults. (laughs) <laughs> Did you just hear our our ten minute rant about the Princess Diaries? We're Disney adults. We're Disney adults. Wow. All right. Well, I think that's it. Everyone, for congratulate weddings. Marin. She's Yay. getting married. Yay. She's gonna have to Carol Middleton me now. <laughs> yep, yeah, I have to momage Morgan. It's all good. <laughs> all right, guys. Well, we will see you next time. Where Marin's gonna be a married woman. Married woman. Wow. Wow. Crazy. All right. <laughs> Bye. One day when you have kids, I'm gonna be the single aunt, the chronically single aunt. You're gonna be Aunt Jocelyn Meyer from Barbie for my kids. If I have yes. kids, we'll see. I will be. <laughs> Your dog. <laughs> my dog. To Libby, the golden retriever, who I, I don't will... have, but I will be getting her. I will show up to your house and just take your dog on walks okay. and take her. Yeah. Spoil her with puppuccinos. Nice. I'm here for that. I, I approve. Okay. Well, this has been the Literary's Podcast. And see you next time. Next time. Bye. Bye.